Coming up next, I'm going to teach you how to have perspective and purpose in your work. And then Gen Z, college grads are having a hard time finding a job. We'll talk about why and we take your calls and it starts right now. All right, here we go. Coming to you live from Ramsey Solution Studios in Nashville. You've joined a conversation about you, specifically your purpose. And we're going to look at your purpose in your work, professional purpose. There's relational purpose, professional purpose, if I'm just going to break it down. All because you are a spiritual being. You have a soul. And the soul longs to matter, to to see meaning, to make contribution relationally and professionally. And uh, many times we'll talk about the relational component in the professional journey, but we are focusing on helping you figure out what you were born to do or helping you figure out a way to get there or helping you actually just make the first step. Because some of you aren't quite sure what you're created to do professionally. Some of you know what you're supposed to do, but you're not quite sure how to get there. And some of you know both of those first two factors. You know what you're supposed to do and you actually know how to get there, but fear, finances, family, failure, holding you back. So it doesn't matter who you are. This show is for you. If you are not where you know you are supposed to be, there is purpose in our work. You were created to work. You were created to contribute. That means you are needed. You're really valuable. And it means you must do it. There is a responsibility, a duty for you to show up and give yourself away in your work because it's about others. You've been given talent, things you do well. You've been given passion, work that you get really, really excited about. You just dive into it and then you are given a sense of mission. Results that you want to create and put into this world. So we're going to help you figure that out. 844-747-2577-844-747-2577. Let's talk about perspective. You know, we hear from time to time uh, here on the Ken Coleman Show or the team as we are out communicating with people and equipping them. Well, Ken, I mean, I'm just a HVAC guy, or I'm just a plumber, or, you know, I, I, I'm just an admin assistant. I don't, I don't know about all this purpose. I mean, I love what you're saying, but, you know, I just, I, I, I just don't have these big lofty dreams. Well, who said that you had to have a big lofty dream to live and work on purpose? And when I hear that, I, I always think of the classic story. It's It's a parable. I've heard it three or four different ways, but the truth remains the same. The story as I know it is based around the famous architect Christopher Wren in the late 1600s. He is commissioned with rebuilding St. Paul's Cathedral. And as the parable goes, the story goes, he shows up on the site one day and he sees three men laying bricks on the cathedral. And he says to the first bricklayer, what are you doing? To which the brick, the first bricklayer replies, I'm a bricklayer. I'm working hard, laying bricks in order to feed my family. The second bricklayer looks at him and says, I'm a builder. So I'm building a wall. The third bricklayer, who happened to be the most productive of the three and the future leader of the group, looks at Wren and says, I'm a cathedral builder. I'm building a great cathedral to the Almighty. Now, all three men working, doing their job. All three men give an accurate response. And all three men have a very different perspective on their work. The first bricklayer is clearly talking about provision. Hey, I'm working hard to feed my family. It's honorable. His work is about the paycheck. The second guy almost gets it. He's like, I'm a builder. So I'm building a wall. He's going, I'm talented at this. I'm I'm just a builder. I'm naturally gifted at this. 
I'm going to do it. So that's what I do. He's got one-third of the equation. He's got the talent part. It's more than just a job for him. It's a talent, and he's going, hey, this is what I do well, so I'm going to build walls. That's, that's what I'm going to do. But he has yet to glimpse or even see clearly the purpose in the third man's answer. He's not just building a building. He's building a cathedral, a cathedral that will honor and praise the Almighty and allow others to come in and do the same. It's a something way bigger than just a nice building. He sees the purpose in his work, and thus his perspective is so much greater. It is purpose that gives us the right perspective. And so I want to challenge some of you today that are sitting out there, you're listening, you're watching, and you're going, okay, I, I thought I was just a plumber. No. You're not. I'm not just an HVAC guy. You know, I look at the HVAC guy and I go, you know what? You're really not an HVAC repair or HVAC technician. That's not what you are. You know what you are? You're a person who provides peace of mind and comfort. Right? Think of the stress involved when the heat or the air goes out. If you're a plumber, think of the stress when a leak happens. Well, first we're providing peace of mind. Oh. <sighs> And then, comfort. When my plumbing's working properly, I'm comfortable. It's what I want in my home. It's what everybody longs for. So to see the purpose in your work beyond the function, but to really focus on the result. That's why I bring in mission, that third piece of the equation. Because let me tell you something. If you use what you do best talent to do work you love, passion, you will be very satisfied. Maybe satisfying. Talent, passion together, very satisfying. No question, success as well. But when you really get the mission piece, the results, my work that I love to do is also producing a result that connects to my heart, my values. It matters deeply to me, this result. I see tremendous value. I see tremendous contribution in the result of the work that I love. So I'm not just laying bricks. I'm building a cathedral that will honor the Lord Almighty is what the bricklayer said. That's next level. That's mission. And so when you can get really clear on purpose, talent, passion, mission, I'm using all three. I'm in alignment. I'm doing what I was born to do. There's purpose there. There's the why. Then the perspective comes along with it. And it's why you can stay in a teaching job that's really, really difficult. It's why you can spend most of your day on your knees or bent over in a tough physical position because you see the purpose in your work. Teachers that are frustrated and burned out, you're not just an instructor. You're a life giver. Some of these kids are coming to your class and they have a really tough situation at home that you may be the only person in their day who looks at them with affection, who looks at them with belief and inspires them to rise above a situation that they can't even fully explain to you. Just the fact, teacher, that you believe in these kids and you transfer some of that belief. Even when you're going, oh, this is exhausting. The behavior issues the paperwork, the stress on all the testing scores, feeling like you're teaching towards a test to keep your job. What keeps you going? The perspective that comes from purpose. So I hope that encourages somebody today. 844-747-2577 is the number. This show is all about you. That's why we make it available to you to be able to call in live even if you're watching this later we're live at 12 noon eastern standard time here on youtube but if you can't get us live 
um, and you're watching later, but you can call in from 12 to 2 because we go right into our radio and our Sirius XM show. So from 12 to 2, Monday through Friday, you can call 844-747-2577 and get on the line and get some help. Let's go to Muskegon, Michigan, where Kyle joins us. Kyle, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, how are you? Kyle, I'm living the dream. What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I am uh, working currently. Um, now I'm going uh, to ask my question, okay. um, which was, so basically I'm a software engineer um, at a Fortune 500 company. Mm-hmm. I also started a part-time consulting uh, company um, back in 2018, and now I'm finding it very difficult to balance life, um, my love of engineering and trying to grow as an engineer with a, you know my wife, three-year-old, and a newborn due in September. Mm. Um, not sure. I feel like I, God's kind of calling me to drop one of them, mm-hmm. you know, and the, my main job is more secure. It's, it's stable. It has insurance. I have all this. My consulting gig is part-time, very part-time, have a few clients, but it, you know, it doesn't pay as well as the, the main job. Yeah. Well, you, uh, walked yourself into a corner and now I got to keep you there. So you feel like God's <laughs> calling you to drop one. Do you have any idea which way he's whispering or is he shouting a little bit what's the story which way are we leaning i feel like he's whispering to drop the consulting gig but i guess i don't know i feel like that's me saying okay kyle you're used to being secure you're used to a a full-time job that kind of handles all the harder aspects of life when it comes to insurance and retirement and stuff like that yeah Um, and it feels and with our, you know, we, we got a new house too, and just, I don't know, it feels that's where it's getting, leading me to, to do that. But it's hard because I, I started it from the ground up. I, I did all the work. I did all this uh, intensive work to get it going. Um, and all the, you know, all my other consultants that are all my colleagues and friends that I also have working with me. What if money weren't an issue? What if uh, the, the, the babies and the expenses and all the fears and that stuff that you're outlining – uh, the house and all that. What if money weren't an issue? What if you had built this consulting business up to where it was making the same amount of money for you as the day job? Um, would this even be a choice? Would it be a no brainer? And which way would you go? I guess I, it would still be a choice because I, I really enjoy engineering and I don't know about entrepreneurship quite yet in my, in my career. Okay. Um, that right there is the million dollar goal. question. Uh, I I will tell you, this is fun, Kyle, because I expected you to say, oh, I would do my consulting company, my deal. This is my baby. I built this thing from the ground up. I thought that's what you were going to say. So I believe you. I believe you that it's still 50-50, but I think it's 50-50 because of the fear. So I'll try one more stab at this. Keep answering honestly, then we'll go a direction here. Um, if, If I guaranteed you that you couldn't fail in this consulting entrepreneurial venture. Not just the money's there, but you can't fail. You're going to be wildly successful, but you're going to be doing that type of work. Would it be a difficult choice still? Would it still be 50-50? Yeah, I think it would be. Yeah. Um, so what? how many hours a week are you putting into the side hustle? Um, if my wife is okay with it and we have nothing going on, I try to do a minimum of 10 to 20. Yeah. But that doesn't sound like that's happening very often because the wife's not okay with it and you got a lot of other stuff going on. I, uh, here, here, here's my answer. There is no wrong answer per se, but there is a safer answer. And if you quit your day job, you would have to really hustle and build up the consulting gig. um, And that would put you in a potentially tough financial situation. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, so it's a no-brainer. If you have to choose right now, um, then I'm going to choose the thing that I know that I really enjoy doing that gives me also a tremendous future. Um. And in this season of you being the number one provider, I think you stay in the engineering job because you really enjoy engineering. And I think you press pause on the consulting company. Pause. I'm not saying that you completely shut it down, but I think you press pause. And I think that's something you can come back to in a different season. But it feels like to me that's where you need to go. 
because financially you're not able to just walk away from the day job anyway. So my advice is always yeah. build a bridge so that you don't have to leap, you walk. Well, that's not a viable option for you right now because of your family situation. And this is a season. So what I would do is um, I would try to wrap up smoothly, whatever that looks like, you can determine that, your current clients and say, hey, for this season, I'm pressing pause. Or maybe you back down to just one client and you keep it because it's only five hours of your week and it's not going to impede on anything else. And you kind of keep that muscle going. I, I, I don't care how you do it, but I think it's now's not the time for you to to go full all in on your entrepreneurial venture. I think that's the answer. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. I, I agree with you. Yeah, but here's the deal. It's a season. Clarification. Yeah, it's a season. There. Are, listen, I had to go slower after my broadcasting career than I wanted to, Kyle, because I had three kids. And I had to run my small business in order to have the freedom to chase broadcasting. So I had to spend a lot of time that first year or two on my own chasing broadcasting. There wasn't a whole lot of chasing. It was me building up my business so that I could have that freedom. So it delayed the chase because I had responsibilities. And that's okay. I think that's where you are. So you're a good man. And uh, don't put this thing on the shelf. Just press pause. That's what I want you to do. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Travis now in Knoxville, Tennessee. Travis, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm living the dream, Travis. What are you doing? Hey, man, I am trying to deal with an internal conflict. Uh-oh. I, yeah, I know. Um, I work as a licensed optician in um, for the largest glasses manufacturer in the world. And I manage a small optical here outside of Knoxville. I've got a great team that I love, um, has the same values as, as me. But what I'm finding is as a man of faith, my corporation is pushing values on me that directly conflict the values that I have in my faith. What do I do? Is that something I need to just deal with? Because that's what every corporation is really pushing right now. Can you be, or, can you, how specific can you be? And you don't have to be, but I'm asking you if you can be and you feel comfortable, share. If not, I'll address it as is. Basically, ugh, I don't know if I can completely be 100% transparent. Okay, then don't. Because I will be labeled as yep, don't. X, Y, or Z. Yeah, How's don't. That? To that totally get it. That's why I left you the option. So here's the deal. This comes down to, are they, are they pushing values on you in the sense of corporate policy and statements and maybe the company itself is donating to things and getting involved in social issues that you uh, – and taking a side that's different than the way you see it? Is it that or is it are they mandating – leadership actions, individual actions, mandating that you do things that you find to be unethical and and not of integrity. What's, which is it? It's going to be the first one. It's the necessarily the celebrating and the talking about the certain issues. They are definitely not mandating anything unethical. Okay, so that to point. me, okay, so that to me is less severe. I did not say less important. OK, this is what I don't want you to hear is me going, eh, just, you know, as long as they're not making you do things you want to do that's unethical, then, you know, just be a big boy and handle it. I'm not going to tell you that. I will say it's a less severe situation. OK, on, on one hand, we're talking, you know, hey, Daniel, eat this food. And Daniel goes, I'm not allowed to eat this food according to God. I don't care what you say. You, you see what I'm saying? There's there's that's that's very severe. That's not your situation. However, um, it comes down to how much this eats away at you because what we've also got is you have somewhat uh, – you, you have a decent amount of autonomy running that local shop, optician shop or whatever, and you got a great team and you love the work and doesn't seem like to me that it's oozing into too much of the culture there. Is that true? That is correct. The, the team that I'm directly under or that I'm over – we we're we are family. I'm able to take care of my family and the community, 
and I'm able to be a pillar in the community underneath a corporate structure, which is what I've always wanted. Then I would stay and I would just, what you got to do is be a big boy and go, this, this, this crap. It's like reading a news headline and you just go, okay. you got to be kidding me. Like, I appreciate that, Kim. You know I what really I mean? Because really... listen, yes. I, I, I read stuff every day that I desperately want to talk about on the show because it irritates the ever-loving snot out of me, and I think it's wrong, and I think it's ridiculous, and I think it's just mind-numbingly stupid. But guess what? That's not what my audience comes to me for, number one. Number two, certain people would turn me off just because of that and not get the actual help that they need. And three, I'm not really going to be able to change it. So I'm not going to take my toys and go home. And the same thing for you. If you walk away today and you send them a fiery email or a video, they're not going to change. You're exactly right. But what you will have done under the flag of principle is forfeited all the other things you just listed out. And um, as long as they're not making you do something that you don't agree with, say something that you don't agree with, then I would I would just say, well, this is a bunch of corporate gobbledygook, PC, woke crap. Am I about right? Yeah. You, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head without hitting the nail on the head. Yeah. And man, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's- you bet. And here's the other thing, one last thing. Find somebody that you can vent to that's not on the team. You know, so this, you know, so you find a buddy, Uncle Larry, you know, somebody that you can call up and go, let let me tell you what my company said or did. This is the biggest bunch of crap and just get it all out of your system. uh, And and then that's going to feel really good. And then go back in and love those people and love your community. But uh, you're a great man. um, And I really appreciate your, your spirit and I appreciate your values. You keep being salt and light, and don't let anybody stop you from doing that. Thank you so much, Travis. Uh, wow, that's good stuff there. Really good stuff. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Okay, when it comes to looking for a job, the one of the big deterrents for people of leaving where they are, uh, the, the miserable, but yet I'm comfortable with the miserable, is the unknown of the job search and the expected rejection. And in today's world, you you could you could submit 50 resumes and not hear anything back. And that feels awful. It's frustrating. It's debilitating. And so that's why I'm partnering with ZipRecruiter.com. ZipRecruiter, uh, I can't talk now all of a sudden. ZipRecruiter.com, number one job site in the world because of their technology and how they match up you, the talent, with companies and positions that are open. Their candidates three times more likely to get hired. I've been telling you this. I'm not going to stop beating this drum. Why? Because they're very effective at what they do. It is an additional arrow in your quiver, if you will, an additional tool in the Get Hired tool belt beyond all the things I offer you at KenColeman.com and here on the show. And it's free. So it's not a risk to you financially. I'm not asking you to write a check or pull out your debit card. I'm asking you to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken and take just a few minutes and fill out a profile and let them start matching you up. Because when they match you to a job, the company goes, ooh. And if they look at you and they like you, they're going to contact you directly and you're skipping all the garbage. It's the right way, the best way to get out there and get yourself noticed and get hired it fits in with everything I teach. It's a wonderful tool, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Oh, by the way, it's free. Go right now, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Okay, quick break. When we come back, we'll get to a big item in the news around Gen Z. And, uh, you know, you never know what might happen. Don't move. This is the Ken Coleman Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Thrilled to have you with us. If you're watching us live, 
We're all around 12, 24 Eastern Standard Time, or you're watching us later, whatever that time is and wherever you are, give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the show and uh, share the show with us. There's a link right down there, one click. You can do all of that and subscribe, please. We're growing. We want to let the YouTubers out there who are just surfing mindlessly trying to look for some spark of inspiration that there's a show that can help them discover and do what they were born to do. Uh, I announced this yesterday. I'm just going to touch on it briefly. Next Monday, August the 2nd, is a big day. You don't want to miss it. Uh, if you somehow miss the show, be tuned in with me on social, uh, at Ken Coleman on Instagram, Twitter, and then uh, Ken Coleman Show on Facebook. We're also on LinkedIn. Big, big news. Big announcement. Two amazing tools that I've been working on for two years. And it's like I've been doing this show daily. Helping you out one-on-one and those of you that never called in, but you're listening to me coach other people and counsel other people. And you're going, okay, I'm getting something from this. Well, we've got two major tools that work beautifully together. My assessment and the new book. I can announce all the details August the 2nd. You don't want to miss it. Oh, am I excited? But first, what's going on with Gen Z? This is the generation that's coming into the market and in the market already behind the millennials. Let's look at it. We call it In the News. All right, uh, headline from Business Insider. Gen Z college grads are having the toughest time finding a job. So let's look at what's going on. Luke Pardue is quoted in this. He's an economist at payroll and benefits provider Gusto, and they did a study. New graduates are getting squeezed out of the labor market on both ends. This is a really interesting development. What does he mean by both ends? Younger teenagers, so they're not even in college yet. And then uh, the youngest of millennials who have more experience than these Gen Zers coming out of college. Hiring rates typically for uh, these workers spike in May and June. New graduates is what we're talking about. Um, But in 2021, we've seen employment growth for recent graduates uh, remain low over the last two months. So we're talking about May, June is the data that we're looking at. Um, Teens typically make up 10% of new hires in June. This was pre-pandemic, so pre-2020. Okay, They made up 32% of new hires this last June, last month. So a big spike. Now, here's why. We saw a lot of hourly jobs come back into the marketplace as we saw Uh, let's just call it uh, travel and leisure industries come back online. So restaurants, bars, resorts, hotels, you name it. And so typically, you know, those lower wages would be gobbled up by college grads who may not be able to step right into their career field. Well, they weren't wanting to do it. Or more likely, based on this data, the rates weren't as high as they want them to be. So you got teenagers are going, hey, I'll take $11 an hour. I've never made anything, right? Versus the college grads going, man, I, I sure would like to make $15 to $20 to $25 an hour. So businesses who are able to afford higher wages, they're paying the younger millennials because they've got some experience. They've been in the job market. So they're poaching young millennials who have more experience to offer than the Gen Zers coming right out of college. So this is that kind of perfect storm where it's coming at these Gen Z college graduates from both sides. Uh, This is really interesting here. Uh, In June of 2021, wages for 25 to 29-year-olds averaged $21.52 an hour in personal services and $21.60 an hour in professional services. So what's interesting is, you got those lower, I mean, you got those younger millennials that are coming in and grabbing that that job versus the Gen Z or who companies may not be willing to pay them as much because they don't have as much experience. So really interesting stuff here. Um, fresh data. All that to say, uh, if I'm a Gen Z college grad, I'm going to have to swallow my pride. And instead of sitting home and licking my wounds, because this is not necessarily a great job market based on these numbers for you, The reality is, is I'm going to take what I can now, knowing that it is temporary, 
I'm going to swallow my pride. I'm going to get hired. I'm going to get in and look to move up quicker. Or I'm going to take this day job and, and it may only pay me 15 an hour or whatever. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to really work Ken Coleman's proximity principle. I've got this major. I thought I had a direction. And I'm going to work my relationships to get jobs instead of putting myself out there in the resume game only. Because a resume is worthless without a relationship. I've got to have a great resume that gets their attention, but it's got to be full of who I know. And that who I know is not just giving me a strong reference, but also shaking the tree for me. That's the way we get hired. So again, the, the proximity principle bundle, if you've got a Gen Z or out of college, they're going, hey, I know kind of what I want to do. But I can't seem to break through. That's why I wrote the book. It teaches you how to turn connections into opportunities. It involves some intentionality and hustle, but it's a practical guide how to do that. The other thing is we've got our resume templates built on the Ken Coleman resume guide, which is free at KenColeman.com. So start there and get the free resource. But we also have six amazing templates customizable for you that make you stand out, but you got to use the methodology, not just the resume. And the methodology is in the proximity principle. It's in the resume guide for free at KenColeman.com. But our six templates are only $9.99 at KenColeman.com. Go to the store. So check it out. You're going to have to do things differently to break out of the pack. You can't just sit there and go, well, Ken said the data said it's hard for me right now. So I'm just going to sit home and play video games and just try to ride the storm out. No got to get busy don't get discouraged get determined that's how you break through i still believe we are in a fantastic job market 9.3 million jobs the latest data that i've seen open jobs so while i read this data i know this data is true but it's like well then go get a job a job is better than no job and we say hey it's temporary Keeps my keeps my juices going. I'm I'm providing for myself. Uh, maybe I'm 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 I've got some extra spending money because I got no debt, and it's providing me an opportunity to have some fun with my friends and family while I'm searching for that ladder in the field I want to be in. Come on, come on. I mean, let's have some perspective here, youngsters. You go feel way better about yourself in a job knowing it is temporary. Taking care of you, maybe providing some fun money while you're searching for the next. I think the worst thing a college grad can do is get discouraged and just kind of retreat and sit at home and not do much at all. I think it is a recipe for almost instant depression. You've done all this work, you're all excited, you came out ready to go, and you can't get in, and pretty quickly, when the opportunities that you want aren't there, it is a very slippery, very quick slope to, I don't matter. Nobody thinks I matter, and I just wasted my last four years. And, right, and then we turn into Eeyore, moping around all the time. I'm just looking for my tail. Anybody seen my tail? I mean, seriously, you guys, they're laughing in the control room, but, I mean, that's not picking on you if you feel that way. I'm saying... That's a natural human proclivity to get there. Why do you think I talk about doing work that matters? Because everybody wants to do it. And if you don't even have a job, then you start to think that you don't matter. Which is a lie from the pit of hell. Don't you believe it? And if I've got somebody's attention right now that's in that, will you call me, please? 844-747-2577, Monday through Friday, 12 to 2. Will you call me? If you've got nobody else to talk to, you can talk to me, and I'm going to grab you through the camera by the shoulders and make you look up and realize that you have talent, things you do well. You have passion. There is work out there that fires you up when you think about it, when you participate in it. Time stands still. And you have a sense of mission. There are results of that work that you love, that when you see those results in the marketplace, you feel full because you see the significant impact that you're making. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for you on the other side of clarity. It's waiting. 
To that end, you don't want to miss Monday's show because I'm launching the tool that brings you clarity like you've never seen it before. More on that coming. I got to stop talking now. I'm going to end up daggum launching the thing and getting all kinds of trouble. Hey, my time is almost up. But before I go, remember this. You matter and you have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Press on.